Welcome back to another episode of GL Rustic Design. Today's video is going to be a sliding barn door uh, king size bed. Um, so all of my cuts and measurements I have dropped in the description below. Also like and subscribe to my channel for more content as we're getting underway with this house and shop and just more how to build. Uh, so the first step is you have to cut your uh, two post legs and then uh, the one by tens um, I use on the back. You just have to make sure the back is lower than the bottom of or the top of the mattress or box springs. This bed in particular, we did not use box springs, so everything had to be just a little bit lower. I came back and I added a fifth board on the bottom. If you did not have, if you did not plan on, if you planned on using box springs, then you would only use the four boards here. <clears throat> and to make sure everything is lined up nice and straight. Um, I'd recommend doing the bottom and the, the top together, then do the middle boards. Um, but the next step is to attach the two by four um, post that will set on the post for the feet and the headboard. Um, I just use some three inch screws, attach the two by fours. This is what the lats for the side of the bed will sit on. Um, and then you also attach the two on the very bottom of the headboard. <clears throat> and like I said, so this is just for the um, the outside lats, uh, the two by 10 lats to actually sit on um, instead of using a metal rod or some kind of metal support. Um, like I said, this is a king bed. If you happen to use a um, a queen bed or a full bed, um, I highly recommend measuring any mattress before you start this project just so you just so you have your own dimensions. I've came to learn that all mattresses, all king, all queen mattresses, they're not the same. They can vary by um, two to three inches width and length. Usually the lengths are the same, but usually the widths are different. So here I'm just putting the two, uh, two and a half inch pocket holes. Uh, this is the 2x10s I use for the lats. As you can see, um, I just ran four pocket holes um, in the headboard side and the footboard side. This is how I attach um, post to post. Once you attach those, you can move on to the footboard. And so once you get these attached, all, all of these pocket holes in, um, I went ahead and I went back to the headboard and I started putting the shelves in. So here again, I um, just want to reiterate the fact of the shelves and the face height will determine will be de will be determined by if you use a box spring or a mattress. This bed is only a mattress, so everything's a little bit lower. Um, <clears throat> If you were going to use a box spring, then um, this this shelf and the bottom of the face, which is what I'm about to do, will need to be 10 to 12 inches higher, um, just so the shelf is not below the mattress when you get everything put on. Um, but here I just use pocket holes, this inch and a half pocket holes, and these little shelf pieces. You can add multiple shelves here, as many as you want. Um, I just chose two long ones. Um, attach those to the back. You can also run screws from the back through those. Um, and then I went to the top, went ahead and um, slid on the, the just the top runner piece. Um, nothing fancy here. Uh, you're not going to see the top. So I just attached um, I just attached some two inch screws through the top. Um, making sure I don't know why I didn't grab any meat, but it didn't, so I had to move it around. Uh, just make make sure that you you know find the right spot for it, um, and then onto the face. So use pocket holes here again. I said all my measurements I have put in the description below. Um, make sure you get those lined up to where you want. 
the top of the bottom board that I'm screwing on now will be at will be the same level as that bottom shelf. And like I said, you can do whatever whatever configuration you want here. If you want to have ten shelves, you can have ten shelves. If you want to have cubbies, um, I said all these are about uh, three and a half inch shelves. Uh, so that a phone will stay on there, a picture, um, you know, whatever you, whatever you want. You can, you can also always choose to make these deeper as well. So the next step once you get um, the main part of the face done is to put the, the, the runners for the barn doors. So here when I cut these, I just... I found the middle, the exact middle of the face and then the exact middle of the little boards that I'm, that I'm putting on. Um, and I've done the exact middle first and then I just went left and right, so a total of three, um, and just so that I can have four compartments for the door, two doors, um, you know, so you can slide them left or right. Once you get this done, you can I sure really haven't found a good way of how to attach these without showing a screw. I'm big on not trying to show screws, but so I just I just put some two and two and a half inch screws through the face of it and and let it go. So um, you can always come back later and putty that. So here we're going to the footboard now. Um, here in a second, and the next clip is showing you how to do the actual barn door. But here, so the the footboard and the drawers. Or by far the most tedious part of this whole build <clears throat> so I just used two of the same size boards length and width um, just one at the bottom one at the top with some pocket holes um, you can also choose to maybe back this up a little bit uh, or run some two and a half inch pocket holes through them just to get a better hold um, but once you get those done you have to put a runner down the middle this is very particular make sure you get this exactly right in the middle um, if you're off by an eighth inch either way, then <clears throat> then each dresser, each dresser drawer will probably end up being different. Mine end up being like a quarter inch off. One side was a quarter inch wider than the other one. Um, so just be sure when you get to down to measuring the dresser itself that you um, measure the width of the dresser that you need. <clears throat> so here, um, skipping back to the barn door, uh, I just use pocket holes. Um, to make a big sheet pretty much and then on top of that sheet um, I do the outside trim and then I come back and do the X um, there's no there's no reason to overthink this um, you know cut your outside pieces and then which is, you all always work from the back so you always put the worst part of the board on the back you can see that knot the knot, pine is so knotty to the you see that little piece to the left um, once you do that um, there's again more pocket holes, face clamp, always face clamps and so they don't move. Um, and then you'll take uh, the, the piece in the middle, which you're going, what will be the X, <clears throat> lay it from corner to corner, and then just take you a pen or a pencil or a knife or whatever you use to draw a line, um, and that will be your cut line. So like here, uh, just two little quick lines, um, top, bottom, and that's where your cut line is simple as that there's no reason to try to find an angle um, I myself am an engineer and I don't try to find any angles so I just the simplest way I can do it so here just pocket holes uh, top and bottom uh, same exact concept for the other side except for you're gonna have the middle to cut out and I always draw me a little line um, to justify the top and the bottom so line 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 and then just like a little squiggle just so I know what was on the top and what was on the bottom. Um, more pocket holes here, uh, just to make make the X, and this will be the same exact concept for the face of the drawers, um, except for they're just they'll be different dimensions, um, like I said. So, but once you get that done, um, so the your barn doors are practically done. Um, from here on, you just attach the you just lay it across the top of the sheet that you, that we just made um four i think they're inch and a quarter screws um, make sure you clamp it down everything stays nice and tight um, i will say this whole thing is stained classic gray um 
you can paint it, stain it, polyurethane it, however you want. I just stained this one gray. Um, so, and then once you get that step done, it's time to move on to the drawer. So here you just you have to cut a piece. I think this ended up being about 16 and a half inches long. Make sure make sure it sits sits back an inch and a half to allow for the the face of the drawer to slide in. But you just attach these to the side of those two by tens um, that we put on earlier. Uh, two of those and then here this is the very back I call it the guts of the drawer um, this is the very back supporting beam if you will say with just some little feet just so I don't know what these people plan on putting in this in this dresser but just so it has just a little bit of extra support on the back just so it doesn't break any of the drawer slides or whatnot so um, I use my um, my countersink bit here because uh, I'm right there on the edge of the wood um, you'll see it when I pull the impact off but I just used some two they were two two and a half inch screws um, ran them through just so that does not move um, once you get the back put on you can do the middle uh, you need two of these pieces again make sure that it's lined up with the bottom of the, the see the runner on the bottom it just keeps everything in line towards the end um, then you make sure those little feet are the same, uh, the same distance, the same height as that little runner across the footboard. But um, you you want to measure your distance there to make sure that the opening and the back, the the drawer, the opening and the the back of it is the same, um, the same width. And then you can attach those with pocket holes and then add that little other screw um, in to hold those in place. And then so here the easiest part uh, or I've, I've came to find out um, I have a little scrap block the scrap that's held by that clamp this is what I, all my drawers I think it's two two and a half inches all my drawer slides are these, this exact height so just so it keeps everything the, the exact same just use the screws that came with the drawer slides which I will link below um, attach those to um, two two per drawer um, and then you come back and use that same exact block just so you, there's no measuring needed that same exact block um, and then you attach the, um, the other part of the drawer that slides in the the drawer um, and then once I do this I slide both I, sl I slid all four of my pieces in um, and then I pulled two of them out per drawer and I measured the distance in between um the distance i needed for this long piece that i'm putting on now and then i pocket hold that together um get it exactly i even come back and i test slide it in there um you could also you could do math here as well um i just choose not to so but just so i know the exact i slide that in um and then you're ready to slide the drawer in so i always slide this this in first um and you it's these slides sometimes can be pretty ticky, uh, so just be patient with them. The last thing you want to do is blow the little balls out. So, um, but yeah, you slide those in, and then you pop the um, you pop the front and the back in. There's more pocket holes. Just feel like this whole thing's pocket hold together. Uh, and then once you do that part, you can start on the face of the drawers. Um, I said make sure you do both of those this is the same exact steps as the barn the sliding barn doors and I'll also mention the sliding barn door rail um, will be linked in the description below I made a separate video there's no point in making this video 10 minutes longer than it has to be when I can just link that video and I, I'll show you how I hand built the the rails myself so um, there's you can you can by all means you can order rail off Amazon or Walmart or wherever or go to Lowe's Home Depot um, but I just choose to make my own because I make so many of these it just I come out cheaper in the end so um, but here like I said same steps um, as it was uh, of course the measurements are different get your length and your widths and uh, cut your tr your backboard and then your trim and then your X's um, few more pocket holes with the clamp make sure those are attached and then you can also you can leave these separated stain the whole thing then come back and put your handle in I just use some knobs so it's just one hole in the middle um, 
But once you get those in, I just use here, I think these were two inch screws through the back of the drawer. Um, and then so moving on to the, uh, the lats to support the mattress. Mattresses call for 10 inch gaps in between the, the two by fours or box springs. If you have box rings, you can go 12. So um, I, I put those little side pieces in the middle, laid two pieces, which I guess I didn't get that on video, across the middle. Also with two little supportings on the side. Do the lats. Um, I said all that's linked below, and then I just put these little blocks here, more or less just for, for just so I can get the lats in there myself and I don't need help. Um, once you get those in, attach those with the three inch screws, um, and then you see your two by four lats spaced um, and then everything's together, barn doors, um, the whole bed's complete. So, um, I said like and subscribe to my video. It helps me out tremendously. Um, I appreciate everyone who has already subscribed. Thank you.